Hello, everybody. My guest today is Adrian Dayton. He's an internationally recognized speaker on social media and business development. At the end of 2013, he launched Clearview Social, a SaaS software business. Clearview Social makes it easy for professionals to share on social media and is currently in use by over 50,000 professionals worldwide. Adrian, you ready to take us to the top? Let's do it. All right. So you came back on. This was actually over a year ago. It was April 29th, uh, 29th of 2018. You had articulated at that point, you guys passed about 147 customers. How are you guys doing today? So we're doing well. Um, we've now crossed 180 customers. Um, the year, like the full year after we talked, uh, we just, we crushed it. We had a great year. And um, and then then March, we can hit a bump in the road this year. You know? Well, but everyone did, I think, a little bit, right, with COVID. So we'll, we'll talk about that bump here in a second. But when sure. you say 180 customers, have you changed anything significant about your pricing? Average ACV back when you last came on was about 10 grand. Are you still charging about 10 grand a year on average? Yeah, so our ACV has risen, which has been good. So our ACV is up over 13,000 now. And um, if anything, the biggest shift has been more of a laser focused on mid to large size companies. I mean, uh, really middle market. Um, I think when, when we're growing, we take anyone as a customer, which I think is pretty common. Um, what, what we saw is a lot of our churn, um, a high percentage of that churn was those very small clients that we didn't serve as well as, as our ideal clients. So even though we saw churn in terms of logos, we ended up with a rising ACV at the end of the year. Yeah, yeah. Well, so take me through sort of your revenue growth journey since 2018. What you let's go forward to 2019. What did you finish 2019 yeah. with in terms of run rate? Yeah, so we finished 2019 just over 2.3 million in our run rate. Mm -hmm. And what are you at today? So unfortunately, we've taken a step back. We're about fifty thousand dollars below that. Oh, in terms of ARR or MRR? In, in terms of ARR. Okay, got it. Yeah, so about, so we're like about two point two five. Yeah, so it, it's been pretty close to flat. In fact, um, our logo churn in 2020 has been almost exactly the same as it was in 2019. Um, it's just that without without the same size of upgrades and without the same size of new business coming on, it's just hurt more. Yep. You know? So I mean, that's been part of the frustration is our software is like this lifeline for professionals during COVID. They can't market. They can't go out to events. They can't go to conferences. And so for the first eight weeks after COVID hit, our usage was just set records every single week. And so all of our customers are happy that are using the software. Just tough to get new customers to bite the bullet and write a check, you know, times like this. So what is gross churn these days? So... Our logo churn is about 10%. Um, overall churn is about 14% on Month, revenue in the year. Monthly or annually? No, that's that's annually. Okay. And every other year before this, we've had net negative revenue churn, right? right? Which I expect will return to as soon as when I don't know when you have when is the pandemic scheduled to end? When do you have that on <laughs> that? I wish if, if if I knew that I'd be buying a lot of lottery tickets right now. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> Yeah, so um, I mean, it's been a challenge, right? So, so like our focus has been on keeping our customers happy, increasing usage, you know, and we've been hitting all time high usage numbers, which is great, you know, um, and we know that the money will follow, just not yet. So, 14% churn, do you have more than 14% of expansion on those same old customers or no? No. So, um, so whereas, in past years, average upgrades were about 10% of ARR each year for, from current customers. Um, now we're, we have in our contracts a 7% annual upgrade. And, and we're just like, we're lucky to get that 7% now. So the oh, you build that into your, 5%. you build that into your contracts. It's an auto, like Dude. sort of like rent where rent can increase 2% over your 30 year yeah. lease. Huh. Yeah. And obviously like Netflix or like consumer brands can't get away with that. But because we're so heavily invested in, in these, more niche industries, um, most of the other products that they're buying have those built-in increases, which is awesome, right? As long as we keep them happy, we get these set increases every year. So that's yeah. that's been super helpful during COVID because otherwise, I mean, it's just been hard to come by new dollars. Yep. Now, have you raised any additional capital or you, you still just have what you had? Adrian, did you raise any additional so capital? Our, our pricing is still very... We did not. We've not... Well, 
uh, are we counting PPP money as additional capital? I mean, that's the only kind of mini raise we did. Yeah. Yeah. How much PPP? So we got two hundred and seventy thousand dollars. Okay. And was that, it was a lifesaver. Yeah. Was it a lifesaver? Yeah, for sure. sure. Yeah. I mean, we we got it. We actually hired one more additional person with the help of the PPP money, and um, you know, to to ride out this period and to have revenues be flat, uh, we feel like it's a win mm-hmm. for us and for our team. Yeah. So you you launched the company, I believe, back in like 2013, 2014. You'd raised money in 2014 and 2015. I think last time we was coming on, you said you raised about 1.4, 1.5 million total. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Was about 1.2 from angels and about 300,000 from a government loan. Okay. Got it. Got it. Did do you have to pay back the loan or no? We did. Yeah. So, but it was like a 4% interest rate. So, um, yeah, yeah, it was great. I mean, I had to personally guarantee it, but we're almost done paying it off. That's great. (laughs) Right. (laughs) So, so what's the, I mean, you've gone from 147 customers, 180 over the past sort of year and a half, two years, but, but they're bigger customers, which is great. Are you profitable today or still burning cash? Yeah. So we're profitable, but, um, but we're right on the line. I mean, this was going to (laughs) be going to be right. This is going to be our breakout year. I mean, every dollar we, we increased this year was going to be pure profit based on our model you know? Um, and, and so a little bit disappointing how COVID hit us, but we were built such that we didn't need to grow to survive. Um, we just needed to grow, uh, you know, to start making some money, which I know is kind of a novel thought for SaaS companies, but, um, we were really in a position to start doing that this year. And, um, yeah, so that's kind of where we are in terms of like, we're EBITDA positive, um, but just barely. Making money is obviously directly correlated to team size because there's fixed expenses there in terms of salaries. What's your team size today? How many full-time people? Yeah, so we have 15 full-time people and three part-time interns. How many engineers? So we have four engineers and then one UX, UI designer. And then we also brought on our first full-time product manager this year. Oh, very cool. Now, Adrian, at this price point, $13,000 average ACVs, can you can you incentivize salespeople? Do you have any quota carrying sales reps or no? Yeah, we do. We do. So we currently have we currently have uh, two quota carrying salespeople and one uh, business development rep that supports that. I see. So let me ask you. I mean, this is a magic moment for a lot of SaaS companies because if you get your sales quota people hiring right, you can scale if you can keep feeding them leads. What do you set quota at for these two sales reps? Yeah. So the quota per salesperson uh, is about twenty five thousand dollars ARR per month. In sales, got so it. So really three hundred thousand, a couple of deals a month. Oh yeah, I, I kind of lost you for a second there. No, but you're saying so twenty five thousand a month means a salesperson should be adding about three hundred thousand dollars in new ARR every single year. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, you, and that, and that's three times what 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 they're getting paid in in base with benefits. Uh, wh- what about base plus commission? So their on target earnings are about one hundred and fifty thousand a year. So what most SaaS companies that, that are able to like hit escape velocity, your ratio is 150K to a quota of 300K. Most it's a four or five X multiple. Why can't yeah. you push up those quotas? Why can't you get them closing 50K in ARR per month? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, I think that our biggest, um, our biggest challenge, I mean, it's a, like a dirty term that I hate, but it's just like, it's total addressable market. So our product fits very well for a unique type of company and we don't have an infinite number of leads, you know, and it's not for lack of trying to get them. It's just that it's difficult to find like our, our right customer. But when we have product market fit, it's, we, it's super easy to sell into those, those types of companies, you know? So, yeah, I mean, I've been chasing that, you know, escape velocity. I've been, I've been chasing that kind of scalability where I can really kind of, you know, I would love to bring on two more salespeople and maintain those quotas. Um, but we just, we've had a challenge getting the lead flow that would allow for that. Yep. And, and are you, when you add up the salesperson commissions, plus all your other sort of marketing and, and customer acquisition stuff, um, expenses, what would you put fully weighted CAC at to get a new $13,000 client closed? Well, and so this is the problem in the current market. We're currently paying $25,000 to get a $13,000 customer. And that's, and that's been, through the pandemic, pre-pandemic, we were closer to nine or ten thousand dollars as a CAC. Yeah, 
Well, and you told me back in and 2018, your CAC was like three grand. Now your ACV average was lower at 10 grand, but your payback period is way shorter, four months versus 24 months today. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the, the cost of acquisition has gone up and it's partly uh, the impact of a maturing market. I mean, for our first four years, everybody we sold to, they had never heard of anything like us and they didn't compare us against anything else, right? If they liked mm-hmm. it, they bought it. You know, now probably half the deals we're going up against a couple of competitors. So obviously that's increasing the cost of acquisition. Yeah. Adrian, would you sell this whole company if, if you got a $6 million all cash upfront offer? That's probably in the probably in the ball, ballpark of where yeah. of where I, I I would be I would listen but, to that. But you know? personally, I guess because most sales, it's really personal, right? You yeah. from like a mental state and life perspective, like are you ready yeah. to like sort of take a bit of a cash out and go, take the learnings from Clearview and jump into like your next big idea? Yeah, I mean, it, it, that's a hard question to answer. I mean, I think, I mean, so I'll give you kind of my two part answer, right? On the one side. Um, I would love to move past and call this business a success, right? Like cash in my chips. This was a single and let's try for a double or let's try for a triple. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and I apologize for the, the baseball terminology, but just like um, to start with no SaaS experience and to build this thing that we've scaled to, you know, almost, you know, hopefully 2.5 million by the end of the year here. Um, I just feel like it's been an awesome adventure. But at the same time, I can't imagine 20 years from now, that I'm still just like beating my salespeople to hit quota each month. Like I just, that doesn't sound like, like a, like the best adventure that my life could be. You know what I mean? How, so how like, much yeah. equity do you own in the company fully diluted? Yes. I own more than half of the company. Okay. That's great. Know? Okay. Okay. Got it. So yeah, a 6 million yeah. cash up front would mean, you know, call it 3 million in your pocket post tax, something like, you know, 1.8 to 2 million. I mean, that's, that's meaningful. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I get calls every week from, you know, there's two types of buyers or two types of kind of people that want to write me checks right now. I talk to companies, well, want to write me checks is a loose term. I'm using that term loosely, right? But um, yeah, the customers are, are the best, for, by the way. Those are the ones that you want checks from. <laughs> right, right, right. So so it's either these companies that they're looking for SaaS, niche SaaS companies that have a million a year in EBITDA, right? That they can just buy that revenue at a discounted rate yep. because they, they're looking for founders anxious to sell. Or you have kind of VC growth oriented investors that are looking to write me a $5 million check to grow my company faster. Right. But, um, but you know, neither of them are a great fit for me right now. Like I just need to grow more, right? Like I just need to grow to like, once I'm at 5 million, I'll check boxes for both of those parties. And then I can just decide like where I want to go next. Um, Look, I have no insider information, but I, I just think someone like Emmerich at Agora or, you know, you know, Laura at Edgar. I mean, there's so many companies in this space where picking you up and adding two, three million in AR pretty quickly, even if they have to pay a little premium for it, it just feels like a no brainer because just looking at just pure scale, you know, a $10 million AR SaaS company is worth more than a company doing 3 million in AR with the exact same economics. Right. Absolutely. And I've, I've thought that exact same thing. And not only that, you know, we have a, we're, we're retaining our customers for 90 months on average, mm-hmm. right? So our our customer base is is very loyal, and 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 also the legal space and accounting space. These are not industries that are easy to break into, right? Like like we've dominated these two markets, and so you know the the ideal kind of partner or kind of acquisition partner would be someone that wants access to those markets, especially if they had other products to sell to those customers. Mm-hmm. Because are you, you selling know, mainly to lead their, lawyers? So, so law firms are probably 70% of our customers, oh. including about 30 of the top 100 law firms in the country. And then accounting firms um, are our next biggest group. And then we have staffing and recruiting firms. And, and then we have technology companies. So we have a number of Sumo Logic that just went, they just had their IPO. They're a customer of ours. Um, and so really any, any company that really wants to leverage their thought leadership and they really want their people to become better marketers, marketers and messengers for the company um, is a really good fit for us. Yeah, this all makes sense. Man, you're in an interesting space. So we'll see what happens. Let's wrap up here with the famous five. Number one, favorite business book. Favorite business book. Um, I think, well, the book that I share with most most entrepreneurs that are building their businesses is Traction by Gina Wickman. Love that book. Yeah. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying? 
Yeah. Uh, uh, that's a good question. I mean, I think I probably, I know it's, I think this was my answer last time and I hate that it's my answer, but like, I think more about the way Steve Jobs thought, but I also love Warren Buff- Buffett as well. If I can use him as my CEO, let's use Warren Buffett this time. Number two, is there a, what's your favorite online tool for building the company besides your own? Yeah. Um, favorite online tool for building my company, um, would probably be sales loft. I think it's pretty, pretty awesome sales tool. Yep. Kyle and the team down there building something special, just past 50 million bucks in ARR. We'll see what happens there. Uh, number four, how many hours of sleep are you getting every night? You know, I like to sleep. Um, I go to bed early and get up early. So at seven and a half. That's good. And situation, married, single kids? Married with three kids. Oh, wow. How old are you? So I'm 41. 41. Very good. And last question. What's something you wish you when you were 20? When I was 20, I wish I knew um, how much Amazon was going to grow. I don't know. <laughs> no, what, what, no what, when I was 20, I mean, I, I don't really have any regrets um, from when I was 20. Um, but I wish I had started learning the things I'm learning now, right? I just, I wish I had started my journey learning about entrepreneurship just earlier, you know? Yep. Guys, Clearview Social, social media for legal folks, top 30, 30 of the top 100 in the country use them. They've got 180 customers today. They just passed 2.2 million in terms of ARR. COVID has made them flat, but again, they've done this pretty capital efficiently. They are profitable today. Uh, they've only raised about 1.2 million in true equity on top of another 300,000 as a government grant, 4% interest rate, 15 people on the team, four engineers, two quota carrying sales reps, a little less than hundred uh, percent net revenue retention, but nothing crazy as Adrian looks to scale where every extra dollar they bring in now will be basically pure profit. Adrian, thanks for taking us to the top. Thanks for having me, Nathan. This is fun. One more thing before you go. We have a brand new show every Thursday at 1 p.m. Central. It's called Shark Tank for SaaS. We call it Deal or Bust. One founder comes on, three hungry buyers, they try and do a deal live and the founder shares backend dashboards, their expenses, their revenue, ARPU, CAC, LTV, you name it, they share it. And the buyers try and make a deal live. It is fun to watch every Thursday, 1 p.m. Central. Additionally, remember these recorded founder interviews go live. We release them here on YouTube every day at 2 p.m. Central. To make sure you don't miss any of that, make sure you click the subscribe button below here on YouTube, the big red button, and then click the little bell notification to make sure you get notifications when we do go live. I wouldn't want you to miss breaking news in the SaaS world, whether it's an acquisition, a big fundraise, a big sale, a big profitability statement, or something else. I don't want you to miss it. Additionally, if you want to take this conversation deeper and further, we have by far the largest private Slack community for B2B SaaS founders. You want to get in there. We've probably talked about your tool if you're running a company or your firm if you're investing. You can go in there and quickly search and see what people are saying. Sign up for that at nathanlacka.com forward slash slack. In the meantime, I'm hanging out with you here on YouTube. I'll be in the comments for the next 30 minutes. Feel free to let me know what you thought about this episode. And if you enjoyed it, click the thumbs up. We get a lot of haters that are mad at how aggressive I am on these shows, but I do it so that we can all learn. We have to counter those people. We got to push them away. Click the thumbs up below to counter them and know that I appreciate your guys' support. All right. I'll be in the comments. See ya.